Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Don't forget that on the Canon app, when you download it from your app store of choice and subscribe, that you can get Nancy Wilson's audiobooks from Learning Contentment, The Fruit of Her Hands, Building Her House, and many, many more with conference talks included and the rest. Even if you don't subscribe, Download the Canon app today, and you can get the Femina podcast there, as well as Canon's other podcasts, like the Blog and May Blog podcast, Plodcast, Stories or Soul Food with N.D. Wilson, and the What Have You podcast. Get all of the Canon podcasts in one single location by downloading the Canon app today. Welcome to the Feminine Podcast. This is Nancy Wilson, and thanks so much for joining me today. So last week, I talked about worldliness, and I promised I would go on to the flesh. So that's my topic today. And Galatians 5 is the perfect place, of course, to go look for help on this topic. So I'm going to refer to a few of the verses, not every single one, but between verse 16 and, let's see, maybe down through 26 or so. This is going to be a quick overview, of course, but I hope you'll take the time to go back and maybe read Galatians 5 and connect with what I'm saying and really look and look at what the Bible says. So let's get started. In verse 16, it says this, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So right off the bat, we see that walking in the spirit is in direct conflict with the desires and lust of the flesh. There's a war going on. Thomas Watson, the great Puritan preacher, said this, the flesh inclines us more to believe a temptation than a promise. So our flesh is leaning in one direction, much like the world trying to press us into its mold. The flesh is pressing us, leaning on us to indulge sin, all kinds of sin. And then in verses 19 through 21, a list of some of these works of the flesh are given to us. So here they are, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. So sexual sins, committing sins like these, including looking at porn or thinking about porn or watching unclean films, etc. These are fleshly sins. And if you're indulging in any of these sins, then you're not walking in the spirit. You can't. You can't be. You cannot both walk in the spirit and indulge the flesh because they are at war with one another. And so then going on to verse 20, that was verse 19. This is 20. He lists a few more idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. So here are some more fleshly sins, fleshly lusts. And so dabbling in heresy, giving way to anger and fighting and hatred, are all ways we would be indulging the flesh, giving the flesh whatever it wants. Rather like Gollum and his precious, where it gets a hold of us and we want it. We want to do these things, which is sort of, you know, if you think, of course I don't want to do those things. But at the time, a temptation it always looks very inviting or else it wouldn't be a temptation, right? We're to hate sin and we're to love God, obviously. So when it says wrath, strife, seditions, so forth and so on, the Bible says not to let the sun go down on your anger. There is a righteous anger. But you know, if you go to bed on it and you wake up in the morning, it may have soured and turned into bitterness and resentment, wrath, strife, and so forth. So we have directions in the word what to do. We can be righteously angry 
But if we don't commit it to God and go to sleep and give it to Him, then in the morning we will have something else. It won't be a righteous anger anymore. And then in verse 21, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. So we want to inherit the kingdom of God. This is very obvious. And this passage makes it very clear that those who live in this kind of a sin swamp are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. We have to kill envy when it arises in our hearts. We don't feed it. And where does murder even come from? But from all these fleshly things that weren't checked in the first place. And it grew and grew until something terrible happens. Or take drunkenness. You know, a glass of wine is fine. A drink is fine. Enjoy God's gifts. But just don't overdo it. I saw a little verse somewhere that went like this. The man takes a drink. Then the drink takes a drink. And then the drink takes the man. And it, that, I thought, was very profound in just a few words. The drink takes a drink. <laughs> and then the drink takes the man. So drunkenness leads to revelings which leads to more sin and more reckless behavior and indulgence. So if a drink makes you far more vulnerable to anger or sexual sin, then don't excuse it. Forsake it, for goodness sakes. Remember that the flesh is telling us lies. The flesh is trying to entice us. And there are many ways to go about it, but we have to not allow our flesh to guide us when we have the Holy Spirit as the alternative, which is such a far better alternative. So we are at war with the flesh. And I'm just going to ask you, are you aware of it? At what points you are being tempted and pulled by your flesh? Are you fighting it? Are you aware of it? Or are you just confessing your sin after you give way? And thanks be to God, there's forgiveness in Christ. Hallelujah. But we need to be putting up a fight, ladies. You know, we have to learn how to call on the Lord and resist temptation and be victorious in Christ and not give way to the flesh. And we have to own up to the fact that there's something in the sin, something in the temptation that we want or else we wouldn't do it. You know, if we were offered something repulsive, we would push it away immediately. But temptation to sin comes decked out in tinsel, and some way or other, it appeals to our desires. We want it, or it wouldn't be a temptation. Now, afterwards, after we've repented, we hate it. But at the moment of temptation, we want it. So start paying attention to your fleshly temptations and put them to death in Christ and Walk in the Spirit, which is to love and joy and peace, right? Walk in the Spirit, which is love and joy and peace, and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. All these wonderful alternatives to fleshly lust. You know, what a refreshing change. And then in verse 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. In Christ, our flesh has been crucified. It is dead. It no longer rules us. At the same time, and I'm not claiming to understand all of these things, but the flesh can still tempt us with its affections and lusts. And when we give way, we are giving power and authority back to our flesh, which was crucified in Christ. So the flesh is both dead and we must daily put it to death. But God has given us his spirit. And as verse 25 says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. This means we're not giving way to fleshly lust. We're leaning against it. We're going the other direction. So you want to walk in the spirit? Of course you do. Well, don't watch nasty things. Don't drink too much. (laughs) This is practical Christian living. Don't be soiled by the world or the flesh. No, you've been bought with a price and you're not your own. You belong to Christ. So make 
good judgments and move out of harm's way and turn away from sin. I mean, run away from sin rather than walking straight into it. Put up a fight. Pray preventatively if you know you're going to be set up for different temptations regularly. Well, pray ahead of time. Pray preventatively. Lord, I know I'm vulnerable in this area. Please help me now to prepare for temptation rather than preparing for sin and compromise. Sometimes with our little precious sins, we plan ahead to actually indulge them rather than fighting them. And so pray ahead of time. Ask God to open your eyes to see the temptation coming. And rather than rolling out the red carpet that you put up a fight and say, no, I belong to Jesus and I'm not giving way to you. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to sing some hymns. I'm going to read some psalms. I am going to have no regrets right now because I'm walking in the spirit. And God gives us his peace and patience and kindness and long suffering, all the things we need at that moment. And then the section concludes with verse 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So these are more works of the flesh in contrast to walking in the spirit. Envy, vanity, puffing ourselves up, (laughs) showing off, self-promotion, seeing who can have the most followers on Instagram. It's all vain glory. It's vain. It's empty. It's going to blow away like the dust. And these things not only hinder us, but they lead us astray where we're just going to be more vulnerable all the time. So ask God to open your eyes like, where am I tempted, Lord? Where do I give way the most? What blind spots do I have? And say, please show me and then help me to start putting up a good defense instead of just letting this play be run over me time and time again. We're victors in Christ. We have a Savior. And you aren't alone in this, whatever the temptation is. And so as we put up a fight against the world and the flesh, it's just good for our souls. We need to see how our souls are doing. And hopefully they're getting stronger and better and becoming better fighters, better warriors, right? And our healthy fat souls, we have to pay attention to them. And the more we give way to sin and let sin just roll over us, the weaker really our souls are, the sicker. So take heed to your souls. Look at what God has given you to do and resist the fleshly indulgences. (laughs) All right. Blessings on your day and on your week. Thanks so much for joining me. See you next time. 